settimane fa l'Istituto Bruno Leone ha organizzato un seminario a Torino dove sono stati discussi temi che riguardano il mercato, l'Europa, l'integrazione europea. Abbiamo chiesto ai più importanti economisti del mondo che cosa pensassero rispetto a temi come la Brexit, l'integrazione europea, le elezioni europee. Sentiamo le loro risposte. È molto importante che le persone I think it's, uh, given that Brexit is happening, given that uh, there's a lot of dissatisfaction with European policies, it's important that people vote and express their will so the Parliament knows where to go. I think Europe is at a crossroads. Europe needs to think whether more Europe is necessary or less Europe. And many people in this continent would like to see less Europe. Uh, they need to speak and let their desires be known by selecting the right candidates. At the same time, I think Europeans need to, to understand that being a European is an important common feature and it also gives um, people in Europe more power vis-a-vis -vis the United States, vis-a-vis -vis China, other countries that are quite large and quite uh, economically interesting for the European Union. Um, so it's, it's important to have a democratic turnout. Uh, I'm a bit concerned that the, the The narrative is, being do is dominated by those who are critical of the European Union. Uh, that's fine, but um, let's make sure that it's correct and that the criticism is, is well placed. That uh, will help everyone understand better. It's, it's not enough to criticize the things that the EU does badly, but it's also important to think of what the EU does correctly or provides public goods like regulation that every country can rely on, pharmaceutical regulation or consumer protection, um, possibly also a common external border, and um, a reliable jurisprudence. At the same time, I think Europe needs to be concerned about over-regulating, and that's why um, it's important to have a, the message of free markets as well. Well, I think the main thing I'm interested in here is uh, the economy. And I think it makes so much difference for the uh, for election. I hope people, hope people pay more attention. And I think uh, the economic policy in Europe could be more, more pro-growth and uh, more efficient. So I'm arguing for that very much. And the, the group that argues for that uh, should win. I hope that's the case. But in terms of forecasting, I really can't be doing that right now. Yeah. Well, it's still very uncertain because the elections are, are being prepared. but. Uh, they always have a part of, uh, uh, I would say, uncertainty. We don't know exactly what's going to happen. My impression is that the pro-European parties will, will keep a, a small, small majority in, in Parliament. I hope that's going to be the case. Well, in, in Europe we always say that European elections are fundamental and that we are at a crossroads and that the future of humanity depends on the next elections. So we have to take this with a pinch of salt. But having said that, I think it is true that because of the rise of populism, uh, because of the rise of xenophobia, because of the problems that the whole globalization process is, exp is experiencing. These European elections are particularly important. There is the fear that as many as uh, perhaps between one quarter and one third of the MEPs that are elected in May may be uh, Europhobes. They may actually be enemies of the European integration project. So it's very important uh, that people do turn out and vote, hopefully to prevent this uh, happening. Um, Nevertheless, I think it's inevitable that the next European Parliament will no longer be dominated by the two traditional groups, the Popular Party and the Socialist Party. We will now definitely have, I think, at least three, if not four, major actors. So um, the political governance of European integration is going to become much more complicated in the future. Nevertheless, I'm hopeful, um, and I think that uh, this rise of populism can be stemmed and that the European integration process will be able to move ahead. Well, there are polls around, so one can uh, consider them uh, good predictions or not. The current polls suggest that uh, the populist, the anti-European group, will be much bigger, can, could be as big as uh, 25% as members of the European Parliament, which of course is not a blocking uh, minority, so they could not stop, uh, for example, appointments in the Commission and so on, but 25% is, is, is a big number. Um, this being said, the two parties which traditionally have formed the majority in the Parliament, which is the 
popular party and the social democrats are unlikely to get a majority this time so if they have to agree with their, with, either with a group that the French will bring to the parliament with President Macron or with the Dutch Liberal. It will be a very difficult and long discussion about uh, the majority in parliament. But I don't think that in the end there will be a shift away from, from, uh, from what Europe has been recently. So first of all, I have two European passports, a Bulgarian and a German one, and uh, of course I'm interested in both. Um, it will be a difficult election. I'm also a very political person doing bits and bytes of politics, my, politics myself. Um, could be that without the UK in Parliament and with lots of new parties which will probably make it, uh, the Parliament might get less civilized or less uh, well-mannered, perhaps. Uh, I am worried about um, extremism, be it from the right or from the left, which is anti-European, which will quite certainly make it onto a much higher scale into the parliament than it used to be until now. So um, I look forward to the elections, but uh, with quite a bit of apprehension about that. I think my thoughts are shared by most uh, people in Europe. Uh, there's a big fear that populist parties might get a large share of votes in the new European Parliament and these people uh, are just intending to destroy the degree of integration we have already reached. It's not about having critical minds, we need them, but uh, these are just uh, destroying, trying to destroy what we have achieved and I think this is a, a huge and unfortunately justified uh, fear for the upcoming elections. Well, my, my, my fear is that the, that the populists will win a larger share of the uh, re representatives of the parliament, and that'll be bad for us all, because I, I, I don't think that populism is permanent. I think it'll go away, but it could do a lot of damage in the short run. I think it would be very important if Mr. Macron is successful in creating a movement that is across Europe uh, rather than just confined to a single country. That is what we really need in European elections. And if he can make some steps in those directions, I think that would be the most important thing that could come out. What people have been talking about, of course, is the rise of the populists and whether they will exercise control in the new parliament. I think that's probably been exaggerated. I don't think it's going to be as bad as some people suggest that, um, that it might be. Uh, yes, there will be some increase in representation, obviously, from the Lega, from the IFD in Germany and so forth, but um, I don't, they will certainly not dominate the parliament. And um, business will go on. European election is a very important election. It is a very important election for many, many people think that it will be a test uh, of Euroscepticism. And uh, people think that uh, there, uh, it will show the rise of uh, anti-European sentiment in Europe. I don't think myself today that it is such a danger. Uh, why? Uh, because when you see where the danger is, really. It is supposed to be in Central and Eastern Europe. But in fact, in Poland, people are remaining very pro-European. And even in Hungary, uh, which makes the position of Orban quite complicated, because he's against the European Union, at least the European Commission, at least the way the European Union is uh, working. But the population is massively in favor of the European Union. So we have to be very careful. In this country, unfortunately, uh, I'm afraid that for many reasons, uh, there will be a rise of uh, youth skepticism through these elections. But as a war, I don't see so much of a danger. The worst danger I see is the rise through people that are not against the European Union, uh, uh, people that, in fact, uh, want less Europe instead of more Europe. And that would be very, very uh,
problematic for a simple reason. When you look uh, around the world, when you look the dangers coming from Russia, uh, coming from Turkey, uh, the position of Trump, the, the rise of China, and so on, uh, you see that we need a, a more powerful and more united Europe for many reasons. The rise on artificial intelligence, the, 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 the speed of innovation process all around the world. Uh, Europe has a lot of challenges to face in a world where we have uh, two superpowers, uh, one which exists, the US, and the second one in construction, which is China. And uh, China, Europe has to keep, to be, to, to, to be sure to remain in the, in the race. And for this reason, and also for security reasons, and even to face the issue of migrations, we will be much better to face this issue together than to do it uh, by uh, country by country. So for, this, for all these reasons, I think that there is a, a momentum for deepening the European project, project to go forward. Uh, and uh, that, the, when I see, for example, the reactions even in Germany of uh, very important influential people like AKK, who is supposed to become the next chancellor, uh, after Mrs. Merkel, and uh, in many other countries, um, except in mine, except in France, uh, I am a little, I am worried uh, about uh, the impact of uh, the elections that could lead to a platform which is less inclined to deepen the European project. I don't think that, that we'll be participating in the European mm -hmm. elections. I think we'll have left by then. Okay. Probably with Mrs. May's deal, I think it'll finally get through the Parliament uh, because the alternative is endless delay. And I think most, the most people in, in Parliament want Brexit to happen. And so the only way to get it to happen is by voting for her deal. And actually, you know, that allows future negotiations on, on, a, on, a, on a trade deal, and I think those will go fine myself, so I can't see much wrong with that, actually. Allora, le prossime elezioni europee è assolutamente probabile che ci sia un'avanzata, diciamo, delle forze sovraniste e populiste. Questo però non credo sarà sufficiente da eh, sconvolgere interamente gli equilibri europei. Eh, è possibile che ci sia o una grande coalizione fra le forze diciamo più mainstream, quindi socialisti, eh, popolari e, li e liberali, oppure un, eh, un tentativo da parte dei partiti popolari di allearsi con parti dei eh, diciamo, i partiti sovranisti e populisti. Eh, questo vuol dire due cose, da una parte eh, sarà un po le potrebbe esserci l'esperimento di provare a normalizzare alcune di queste forze eh, populiste e in secondo luogo penso che ci sia un appunto anche per l'Italia, ovvero che è illusorio pensare che eh, appunto anche un successo da parte di eh, forze populiste possa rendere in qualche maniera eh, l'Unione Europea eh, più, eh, come si può dire, meno stretta, meno, eh, i vincoli europei meno eh, stretti per eh, quelle che sono le politiche italiane.